My name is Andrew Fennig. I'm the Director of Technology Development for Love Justice International, and we are um, an anti-trafficking organization. Trafficking is a global problem. It happens everywhere. Arrests happen all over the world. It's illegal all over the world. Um, the trafficking in particular that we work in is deceptive um, pr practices. So uh, traffickers will deceive mostly young women, some young boys, into accepting jobs in other countries that are too good to be true. And so they go willingly. It's not, a, it's not like the movie Taken, where there's kidnapping and, and organized crime, although it is organized. Um, but it's deceptive practices. So, so the victims go willingly. And then it's only after they cross the border and are lost into brothels and brokers and this whole network that their lives are destroyed. Um, so what we do is there are, there are uh, two main anti-trafficking strategies. The first is prevention, which is mostly through education. And the second is rescue. Um, the problem with prevention is that it's impossible to prove effectiveness because you can't prove a negative, right? Um, the problem with rescue is that the damage has already been done and rehabilitation becomes very difficult. So what Love Justice does, we sit right in the middle in something, a strategy that we call transit monitoring. And so we intercept victims as they're being trafficked, but before they've crossed the border and are lost forever into this horrific system and uh, intercept them before the trauma takes place. So in Nepal, you have about 40% unemployment. And so uh, traveling abroad for work is a huge part of their economy. The remittances are really important for rural, poor communities. And so everyone's looking for a job. Um, the opportunity comes for, for the, the traffickers in, in offering jobs that are too good to be true. Pay that's too high, it's, it's a dream job. And so people who are desperate um, are willing to take huge risks for this dream of, of being able to provide for their families. So what happens then is they, they go with strangers to a, a promised land, and when they get there, they are first, sometimes they're just forced to work and, and unpaid, and uh, oftentimes when they ask for the, the money for their payment they've been promised, they um, are beaten and then put back to work, and when they ask again, they're beaten again, and beatings eventually turn into rape. Rape extends to gang rape. And gang rape continues day after day after day until the human spirit is just totally broken. The will to resist is gone. Um, sometimes they're told that if they don't comply and, and cooperate with the brothels, that their mothers or sisters will be trafficked in their place. Sometimes they're drugged to make them compliant, right? So, so these people who are generally conservative, they, they don't want to do this. No one grows up and wants to be a prostitute, right? They are, they're broken down, and the only way to survive is to relent. And, that's, and the brothels are just full of these stories. And, and then they're sold, the broker goes through this process, sells them to a brothel. And uh, we've had reports of where they're forced to service between 40 and 50 men in one day. Um, so it's just a devastatingly awful crime, and, and what we believe is uh, the greatest injustice of a generation. There's something called the Global, Global Slavery Index that comes out uh, every couple of years. In the last five years, the number of total slaves in the world has, uh, the consensus has ranged between 25 million and 45 million, right? Now this number doesn't fluctuate because slavery is expanding that rapidly. It happens because nobody can agree on what the number is. Some say 30, some say 40. Trafficking happens in the dark. Right? This is a crime that happens in the dark, and trafficking as a system is a black box. So no one can agree on how someone disappears from a village. It's anyone's guess as to what actually happened. So what we do with our system, because we are intercepting at the point of the crime, we get data that no other anti-trafficking system or, or strategies can provide. So with every interception, we have um, dozens of data points which we can then use for intelligence-led investigations, where we can go after the trafficker. Um, it's one thing to pull a, a drop out of the stream. It's another thing to turn off the water supply, right? So this data uh, becomes incredibly valuable, not just to us, but to our investigations, to our um, conviction efforts, to law enforcement, and to other organizations that are in this fight with us. So technology comes in to help us um, collect and manage this data, which is really important. Um, in addition, so we, we have a custom data management uh, system called the Dream Suite, which is what I'm responsible for. 
Uh, with that, we can share data and analyze it in a really powerful way. The second piece of technology that we have is called the Safe Horn Employment App, which we're just about to launch. And basically, we've taken our whole anti-trafficking strategy and put it in an app that anyone who's traveling looking for safe migration can use to evaluate their opportunity and see if it's safe. So we're actually helping people to self-intercept before they're trafficked. The third that we're really excited about is called the Project Beautiful app. And this is, we're taking data from the field that is in our Dream Suite database and pushing it out to our donors, to our community of supporters that agree to support us monthly. And with the Project Beautiful app, we have almost daily feedback on the number of interceptions we can give, we, we pass on stories of, of arrests and convictions, and then rescue stories of people whose lives were changed because of the support of our donor community. So the technology is a way to um, collect this really valuable data, which gives us, we, we hope, the, the, the dream is to have the clearest view of trafficking in the world of any organization and then to share that. But then also to have a real link to our donors of, of the work that we're doing in the field to hold ourselves accountable. Um, we have a maniacal view on the metrics. We really care about how the work is done. And um, we want to pass that on to the people who allow us to do the work. So we have a lot of stories like that. In the first year that we operated, we started anti-trafficking work in 2007. So for over a decade, we've been perfecting this transit monitoring strategy. In our first year, we had 63 interceptions. Um, as of this morning, when I looked at the numbers, we are closing in on 14,000 uh, total. We're averaging um, over 200 a month now as we expand into multiple countries. We started in Nepal and we're in, um, we're, we have staff in about nine countries operating in, in just under that number. So we're, we're expanding rapidly. Um, our big dream is to, or our vision for the next five years is to have 100 uh, monitoring stations in 20 different countries by 2023. So we have a lot of very specific stories. Um, it's very common that the person who is being trafficked is recruited by someone that it has befriended them in a village. A lot of times this is a crime of opportunism. So it could be a distant uncle who visits a family and sees that his nieces are coming of age and, and sees a financial opportunity there. Um, sometimes it is, it's big traffickers who have networks of traffickers under them. Um, but we have countless examples of people who have been stopped and then sent home. 96% of all of our interceptions return home after, being, after realizing that they were about to be trafficked to a brothel. So our organization is called Love Justice International, and our mission is sharing the love of Christ by fighting the world's greatest injustices. We believe that human trafficking is the greatest injustice of a generation. Slavery is worse today than it has ever been in history. So we, we revere prohibition, um, sorry, abolitionists of the past, and we believe we need to be abolitionists of today, right? So we are providing an opportunity for the church. We are the church. We're an extension of the church doing the work of kingdom building with the church. And so generosity, right, we're, we're, it's, it's, it's obligates duty to do um, the work of justice for the Lord. And we are one opportunity to do that. So we want to make it easy for people who love the Lord and love the things that he loves, whose hearts are broken for the things that break his heart to engage in the work that he's doing through organizations like ours. Um, we've tried to make that very simple through Project Beautiful, and so we invite people to join us in this work and um, empower us to do it on their behalf. Start with our website, lovejustice.ngo, projectbeautiful.org, um, to learn about what we do and why we do it. Uh, what, I would say it's very easy to support the mission of Love Justice and other anti-trafficking organizations. Human trafficking is an obvious ill in the world, right? Um, but I think the, what, what really drew me to the organization was the way that we do it. The, the strategic value of our methodology, the way that we've fine-tuned it over the past decade um, and gotten it to a scalable point where we, where we can expand to, to other regions of the globe. Um, I'm convinced that we are one of the most effective strategies um, in this fight against trafficking. And that dollar for dollar costs about a little over $100, between $100 and $125 to intercept one victim. Um, it can cost anywhere from $1,400 to $3,000 to rescue a victim. So, uh, and, and, and our interaction is before the point of trauma. So we think that's really important. 
So we are, we are convinced by the efficacy of the strategy and uh, we're, we're just excited to be expanding and, and, uh, support, and having the support of the church and inviting others to join us in that.